Cole and Zoe from Avatar. Okay, yeah. okay good. Um, Sam, fantastic movie. Um, I think the dream for a lot of actors and the people like myself is, is to play the hero. How uh -huh. was it in this movie? Well, I think we're all the hero. I think we've all got a hero <laughs> capabilities. I think if you say you're a hero, it, it's very arrogant of you. Um, I think people have to endow you with being that. And a hero to me is if someone gets knocked down, you help them back up. That's a hero. Um, someone who helps others. Um, sounds, that sounds logical to me. But you know, a role like this is he gets strength from other people and then goes and saves the princess. But you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's a vulnerable hero. And again, going back to, to, to the dream that uh, every child has, all of us, uh -huh. men, to, to play fight. How was it in oh, the movie? It's, it's like that. You're a big kid. Um, you have your rubber sword, you have your dress, and you go battle the monsters. It's kind of a, you know, it's a weird day in the office, but uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. How demanding was it? Um, more than I thought. I thought it would be quite easy, um, but it was physically tougher than Terminator, which was a, a tough kind of gig. But um, you know the the good thing about it was the you're working with collab is very collaborative. Louis is an extremely collaborative, hands-on director. He doesn't just sit on the hill yelling at you. He's right down with you, which is great. So to work with people like him and Liam Neeson, Ray Fiennes, and, and Mads Mikkelsen, it's it's you're all in the same trench trying to create the same product. And one thing that um, is is interesting that I read that you were attracted by the fact that. The character is sort of family orientated. Yeah. Family is important for him. Yeah, it's important to me. Yeah, I think that's something. With a movie like this, you have to find something that an audience can can see themselves in, can link. And here's a troubled teenager who loses his family, and has to calm down a bit and finds another family. And he's searching for answers from his dad, who happens to be Zeus, the god of gods. But we realize how fallible that man is. And you know, we see that with our own fathers growing up. That they're they're larger than life when you're six, but then you get to an age, like I'm 33, so you get to an age where, you know, I see my dad's little weaknesses and his vulnerabilities, and it's, you know, you connect on a different level, you, know, you get answers about your life, you know, and, and, you know, those type of themes, I think, are, are relevant for, for all societies. Castle of the Titans is one of the greatest movies of the 20th century. Uh, we all love it, mm -hmm. I'm sure you love it too. How different is, is your Perseus from from the one from well, 1981. Well, in, in that one, he kind of liked using the sword and loved all the god side of him. And I thought, you know, I've got a nine-year-old nephew, and I thought if I'm saying to him he can only achieve something by being a god, you know, it's not a very good message. He's nine. And so I wanted him to be more uh, dominated with trying to figure out how to do this as a man. So then Ridley, my nephew, can look deep within himself, find other like-minded like men, and, and achieve anything he wants. Yeah, so that was what I tried to push hard on. And also very interesting to see the, the, the cast. I mean, people from all over the world. Yeah, How was yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, we couldn't understand anything anyone was saying. <laughs> and, and, and Louis French, so he was like, oh, it doesn't matter, come on. But uh, no, it's good. You, we've all got a wealth of experience from our own countries, and we all have a different sensibility of how we see the world. So, you know, that, that, I, I like that a lot. You know, you're not just uh, stuck with a bunch of Americans or stuck with a bunch of English. You, you, the, the way, uh, say, Mads looks at the world is a lot different to anyone else. And I, I, you know, and I you know, enjoy that. Yeah. It wasn't originally recorded uh, or filmed to be a 3D movie, but mm -hmm. now that you see it in 3D, yeah, well, I think, you like well, it? Yeah, man. You know, look, uh, Jim Cameron proved that uh, 3D, if used correctly, can uh, immerse you in a world and really take you to a planet. Um, with this type of movie, uh, the 3D kind of you get you remove the screen and you feel hopefully you're in this epic, uh, epic kind of environment. Um, you know, and I think that that's what 3D is good at, really taking people into the world of a film. The last question: Avatar made you a superstar. What do you think of this movie? What, what do you think is going to be the reaction of the people, and what is next to you? Um, look, I hope uh, you know the the way people embraced Avatar is never going to be seen again. You know, maybe Avatar 2, who knows? But that was just phenomenal, um, and especially the speed of it. Um, hopefully with this movie, I, you know, my job is just to keep my caliber up, tell the story that the director wants me to tell, try my best, and, uh, and give the audience their 16 bucks worth, or however much it costs, um, uh, where you're from. And that's all I can try to do. You know, I can just try to do my job, man, and, and, and touch wood. And what's next? You know, well, you know, Avatar 2, hopefully. Sam Worthington, muchas gracias por hablar con NTN24. Yeah, muchas gracias. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you.